In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. We ask St. Mark to pray for us in this feast. We pray for the Church as we commemorate the Rogation Mass. So today, we should look at every novice master or every novice mistress. We'll have to teach and guide their novices in religious life about keeping the presence of God in the soul. This is perhaps the ABC principle of all of religious life. It's very important that we're called to be very close to the presence of God. And we have to make an effort also in our own our own will and our own intelligence to collaborate with that primordial grace of baptism and of religious profession. That we believe that we we are inside the heart of God by a very special call, a very special grace, a very special privilege, as the Council of Trent says, even above that of the married state. And so this is not just a medieval invention of keeping the presence of God in our souls, but rather it is an apostolic tradition for St. Paul taught to the Greeks in the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, in him we move, we live, and we have our being. And it's not just a nice cliche to try to convince the Greeks, but rather it is of a truth. And that's true with all Christians, but most especially to those intimate friends of the heart of Christ, those who belong totally to the Good Shepherd, to the Divine Spouse. And you who are brides live this in a very unique way. Therefore you must give thanks, but also see the importance and try to live it in your life. So we said this is part of the apostolic tradition. This is something that St. Mark himself would want to teach us today would try to emphasize to us as we continue this Mass to receive these graces. So therefore it's vital to be aware of God in us, to cherish this grace, to protect it, and make it grow, this sanctifying grace that He has given us and matured within the life of the community of religious. There are four ways by which we can practice this presence of God within us. Of course, it being all the grace of God, His, His gift to us. But still, we can collaborate, and I'm sure you're learning this in your novitiate, as our Lord is inspiring you. Uh, so hopefully I don't deviate from the course of your learning, but maybe this may be helpful to you. The first thing that we can do to cultivate this presence of God in our soul is to use external objects such as the images of the, of the Sacred Heart or of the saints to use a crucifix. You know, it was my, my tradition. Uh, I used my profession crucifix, which by our constitutions was the only possession that we're able to keep. It was the only material good that we're able to keep in our own name. And, um, and so I would always keep that on my bed pillow all day would be there. It await me when I go to retire for the evening. The crucifix. The sight of which these images and crucifixes can remind us often of God and His holy ones that He dwells in his saints, that he is very near us, very close. You know, it's very impressive, you know, having served in South America for many years, uh, to, you know, the children are playing in the schoolyard, you know, I'm the chaplain and I'm watching the kids and the kid would be running around and all of a sudden go in front of the, in front of the, the, the Blessed Mother statue and he, he would stop for a moment, make the sign of the cross and then run off and, and do his thing, you know. I thought that was so cute, you know, to see how, how to even have that little 
reverence. They were understanding uh, things that we ourselves try to understand. And also, secondly, we should use our imagination. Imagination could be a double-edged sword, as St. Teresa of Avila says, uh, la ama loca de la casa. It's uh, the mad household wife uh, that runs around a kitchen, so to speak. It could be used, and it could be used against us for so much negativity. Uh, in our memory, we can call back many things that are n not so delightful. But God took that risk in giving us this tremendous capacity. You know, dogs don't have it, cats don't have it, to be able to remember intellectually, remember things. Uh, but the reason why He gave it to us is not to torture us with negative things, but He gave it to us so that we can remember Him. So we can center our attention upon His greatness and His holiness and His goodness and His mercy and to serve Him that way. And therefore, remembering Him in our imagination, uh, using our imagination, using our lower faculty of the imagination, but also using our higher faculty of in intelligence, we can serve Him that way. We can cultivate the presence of Christ. So we can picture Him, the Divine Spouse, interiorly near us, physically away, but even by His sacred humanity still exercises an influence over us, even a physical one, through the communications of grace. And then the third way in which we can cultivate the presence of God in our souls is calling to mind a truth of the faith. For example, the Word made flesh that dwells among us. Or the indwelling of the Holy Ghost inside of us, or an indwelling of the Holy Trinity inside of us. And therefore, my actions, all the actions that I do throughout the day, if I remember this, then I can offer up all these actions in honor of these three divine guests in my soul. And so pick whatever truth from the Catechism and you can truly turn it into an act of the presence of God just by savoring its truth, its saving beauty. And then the fourth thing that we can do is also use each other in order to recall God's presence. People that I'm in contact with, they are also channels of the divine presence of God. God dwells inside of my sisters. Here in this religious community, you have that ample opportunity. You know, people out in the world, they have to put up with less grace-filled people, you know, but here in almost everybody's saints already, you know, so even though they may step on your toe, um, but they are filled with God's graces. And so I should appreciate that and consider that a privilege and also an honor. Even with the troublemaker sisters, to know that God dwells in them. You know, after Mass, you can say, wow, my sister has received Holy Communion. Remember. That's what Jacinta used to do when she was sick in Fatima there. She was sick and dying in her bed. And Sister Lucia would come and visit her after having going to Mass and receive communion. She says, please come close to me because I can sense that the Eucharistic Jesus is inside of you. I want to be close to Him. So this inspires me to be kind and gentle and objective and respectful even to the person who bothers me. And so if Jesus came and wants to dwell in that troublemaker, then who am I to throw the troublemaker afar away from me? You know? So if, if, if my Lord and Savior, if my, my greatest friend, 
if he put, puts up with her, well then so I could as well. So as we continue this holy sacrifice of the Mass, let us ask St. Mark, the Apostle, uh, to help us to grow in these virtues, this part of this apostolic tradition, which is to recognize that we, we, we move, we are, we live, and the heart of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.